So we haven't been living in a post row America for very long, but it's already proven to be a disaster, expectedly so. It's disastrous for women. It's disastrous for doctors. It is truly barbaric. And what I think will be different this time is that women now have access to social media and cell phones that have cameras so they can share their stories. It's not like this is all going to be conducted specifically in the dark. Now, women can take to social media and explain why this ban on abortion affects their lives in a negative way. It impacts their lives in a way that might cause death. So even if that is one benefit to living in the social media era, a detriment could be that women may inadvertently incriminate themselves because many women will be forced to cross state lines. And with these bounty hunting laws popping up, we don't know if they could be sharing their story as a means of educating, but end up leading to a situation where they're prosecuted. So we don't know how bad this is going to get, but just a couple of weeks in, it's already bad. It's proving to be as barbaric as we anticipated it being. So as The Hill reports, a 10-year-old girl was denied an abortion in Ohio after the Supreme Court ruled last week that it was overturning Roe v. Wade, demonstrating the tangible impacts that the high court's decision is having on patients seeking access to the medical procedure. A child abuse doctor in Ohio contacted Dr. Caitlin Bernard, an obstetrician gynecologist in Indiana, after receiving a 10-year-old patient who was six weeks and three days pregnant, the Indianapolis Star reported. That patient is now heading west to Indiana, given that an abortion ban in Ohio, which prohibits the medical procedure when fetal cardiac activity begins around six weeks, had become effective quickly after the high court issued its decision. Now, pause for a moment. This is why women denounced the six-week abortion ban in Texas, these fetal heartbeat bills. Because most women don't even know that they're pregnant. And in the instance of this 10-year-old child, she was three days too late, forced to cross state lines for health care. Why? Because a group of unelected religious zealots on the Supreme Court declared that this isn't actually an inalienable constitutional right. I mean, it's just, it's a nightmare. It is a nightmare situation. And what people don't realize is that it's not as simple as, oh, well, I don't want to have a child. I'm going to get an abortion. Even if women have the right to do that because it's their own bodies, most abortions aren't really that simple. Some are required to save a woman's life. And now that's a bit more complicated. Doctors are in this situation where they don't necessarily know what they should or shouldn't be doing. Save a life or potentially deal with the ramifications of a lawsuit, losing my medical license. Um, you know, this is a decision that doctors have to weigh out. And this is how it affected one woman who shared her experience on Instagram. So she showed this horrific image of her bruised stomach, adding, I'm just going to leave this here. This is what I look like right now. I almost died last weekend. I feel like less of a woman, all because of the overturn of Roe v. Wade. I had an ectopic pregnancy, and it was unilaterally decided by a bunch of people who don't even know me that the fetus growing inside of me that never should have been there because I did have birth control was more important than myself. I needed an abortion. I waited for days for surgery because even though my tube ruptured, they weren't allowed to treat me without speaking to lawyers, etc. I lost 1,000 cc's of blood. I had tubes shoved down my throat, and now I'm missing huge parts of myself that will affect me for the rest of my life. I'm devastated and I'm in pain. And if any of you on my feed support this fucked up shit, delete me now because this is just wrong. So prior to Roe v. Wade being overturned, if a woman had an ectopic pregnancy which is life-threatening, that fetus is not viable, but uh, before, doctors just did what they needed to do to save that woman's life. In that instance, give her an abortion. But now, they can't just intervene and give that patient health care. They have to consult with lawyers. And so, when you're in this current legal gray area in states like Louisiana, where a trigger law goes into effect, but it's not technically active for a certain period of time, doctors are left wondering... 
we don't know what we're supposed to do. So as Greg Sargent of the Washington Post explains, as one provider puts it, the fear of facing extensive jail time and hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines if medical professionals interpret the law incorrectly will lead to patients being turned away for care that they desperately need. Similarly, an emergency room practitioner testifies that medical emergencies related to pregnancy will be much harder to evaluate. Medical pros will be working under threat of prosecution for making critical life-saving decisions about how to treat patients with dangerous pregnancy pregnancies and miscarriages. Still, another warns that doctors will be reluctant to direct patients to seek emergency treatment amid pregnancy complications for fear of being accused of attempting to induce abortion, possibly resulting in patient death. And one gynecologist testifies to the fear that doctors will feel forced to refuse necessary appropriate care to avoid prosecution. She notes that it's unthinkable that she may be forced to choose between my patients and my liberty. And this is healthcare we're talking about. These doctors entered the field to save lives. And now they're in a situation where legally they may not be able to intervene and save these lives. This is barbaric. Civilized countries do not subject doctors and patients to this. Civilized societies take care of people. They not only allow for abortion because it is healthcare, but they don't even put the burden on patients. I mean, think about this in the United States. Healthcare in this country is cost prohibitive. So a lot of people who want to seek out medical care might not be able to because they don't have insurance or maybe they do have insurance, but they can't afford the co-pays. So we don't even have universal healthcare. And now we're forcing women to give birth. We don't even offer paid maternity and paternity leave. And now we're forcing people to give birth. What a pathetic country that we live in. What a pathetic, embarrassing country that we live in. Why? Why is this being forced upon all of us? Because just five unelected religious zealots chose that this is how it has to be now. That states can ban something that we all grew up knowing as a constitutional inalienable right. And it's not like these red states weren't chipping away at the right to an abortion, over-regulating abortion clinics, trying to find ways to chip away at it. Death by a thousand cuts. But now... It's over. We're firmly in the post row era and women are going to die. Women are going to die. And it's been a couple of weeks and this is already happening. This is already a nightmare. Now, I want to go to an article from Newsweek. We're not going to dive into it, but this article profiles the owner of Mississippi's last abortion clinic, which, of course, was forced to close down. And it talks about Diane Durzis, who owned this clinic. And she explains that abortions, they affect everyone, including families that you wouldn't necessarily expect it to affect, i.e. evangelicals, because these homeschooled, overly sheltered children aren't given proper sex education, which of course leads to unwanted pregnancies, because abstinence-only education simply does not work. It is a proven failure. And she even discusses how patients tell her that they're against abortion while they're having the procedure. And you'd be surprised how common it is for so-called pro-life, i.e. forced birthers, and evangelicals to actually get abortions, because they think, well, my, my case is different. I'm unique. I'm against abortion. But in this instance, I needed it because of health reasons, or I needed it because this was one mistake that I didn't want to make. A lot of evangelicals, they get abortions too. They won't admit it, but they do get abortions. And Diane is confirming that because it's different for them, right? All these other women, they're just casually being, you know, uh, risky, having promiscuous, uh, you know, Un, uh, unprotected sex and that's why they're uh, they're getting pregnant it's their fault it's not my fault though so i should be able to have an abortion except this is an issue that is going to affect every single person directly or indirectly you may be a man who can't get an abortion or get pregnant but understand that this will still affect you you have a sister a daughter perhaps a significant other who may one day need an abortion and in some way or another, this will touch every single American. This is going to ruin lives. This is going to end lives. So I don't know what else to say about this situation. We predicted it would be a disaster, and it is a disaster. And a really good point that Jen Uger made about bodily autonomy is that we value bodily autonomy so much that the right to bodily autonomy is almost universally recognized. I mean, think about this. This is really about saving lives, right? They, they consider fetuses 
human beings once it becomes a human being full baby they don't care but you know these these uh abortions must be stopped because we've got to save lives okay well do we force people to give up kidneys do we force people to donate blood against their will no we don't do that because the right to bodily autonomy is something that as human beings we acknowledge is something that we should protect but not women and it's because we never respected women in this country. They didn't get the right to vote until the 1920s. We don't value them as equal human beings. We've always perceived them culturally and legally as inferior to men. And this is just being enshrined in law now because of these religious zealots on the Supreme Court. As society advances and moves forward and acknowledges that abortion is something that is necessary in a civilized society, they're taking us backwards because they never valued women because their religious doctrine dictates that women are unequal to men you know uh women were created out of the rib cage of adam eve was a part of adam so she's just like an appendage to him not a full human with her own autonomy and desires and right to life as well so this is the united states of america